So this is my latest uh, project. Um, it's a TV wall in our media room. Um, so I'm going to just, I couldn't get the whole wall in the frame for the video. So um, that's why there's just part of it. And I'm going to show you though that um, basically this just sat on something before and now I've framed in a complete wall that's attached to the ceiling and to the floor so it's really sturdy. But I want to show you that um, like these panels right here have speaker cloth on them and they just pop right off so that you can access the speakers. And the center one here pops off to access the, um, the equipment where um, it's on a swivel so that uh, my husband can get back to the uh, all the wires and stuff because we have like this amazing surround sound system with 11 speakers and that's his hobby so um and he's been wanting me to do this for a while these uh, panels also pop off and, and they're magnets so they just go right back on pretty easily and um i will just grab the camera and show you the other. So also off to the side, um, another panel that pops off for the speakers there, but there's uh, these sliding panels to get back to this desk up there. And they're just like um, closet sliding panels. There's a subwoofer down here, so this has to be fabric for the sound to come through. But anyway, um, that's uh, my latest project. This is what the media room looked like before I started this project. The 80 inch TV was sitting on top of the front speaker and then that was on top of a um, like a 2 by 12 box type thing and then that was on top of a cabinet. So the first thing I did was disassemble the cabinet and I planned on reusing the cabinet components for parts of the project. I then marked the locations of the studs in the ceiling and calculated the pitch and the angle of the ceiling so that I could miter cut a 2x4. I attached that 2x4 to the wall in two anchors and then I took a 2x4x12-foot board, pre-drilled holes with a countersink, and nailed that into the floorboards. So after marking where the ceiling studs were, I pre-drilled and started screws in a piece of 2x4 that I attached to the ceiling. Then I got a 2x6 because I wanted to frame the actual TV with two by sixes so that it would um, be flush with the front of the wall. So this would give me a six inch depth for the TV. On the left side, I had to position a temporary two by four to the ceiling just so I could mark, get the right markings for the other side two by four that was attached to the ceiling. I ended up needing something a little longer than 12 foot so I had to add a little bit of two by four. I used pocket holes in my vertical studs and attached them to the upper and the lower two by fours. I attached some little scrap pieces of wood to my board so that I could get them in the right place and put long screws in through the 2x6s. And then I put a 2x4 across the back, slightly lower so that it would hold that uh, one shelf. I marked the wall level where the 2x4 to hold the shelf on the wall would be.
and the top shelf that holds the front speaker is the old top of the original cabinet. Then I took a couple of the other cabinet pieces and made a turntable from an old um, boat swivel seat. When I screwed the swivel plate onto one side, one of my screws stripped and I couldn't get it out and I couldn't push, drive it any further. So I left it, not realizing that it would cause an issue later. I didn't actually realize how difficult it would be to attach the second board to the other side of that swivel plate. I used some duct tape to hold the bolt in place and then trying to line up the other board with those holes was a bit of a challenge. I was really frustrated with it actually, but finally got it done. I left the little dowels in the back of that board to help me um, hold the board because it was a, kind of a long, awkward shape. I cut small lengths of 2x4 to fit between the front 2x4 and the wall to support the floor for the swivel turntable. This was the point that I realized the stripped screw was preventing the turntable from turning, so I took the whole thing apart removed the strip screw and then reassembled the whole thing. Then I cut some plywood and made some little shelves that would hold some of the other components, the DVD player and the, the router. I painted the framed wall and everything that I thought might show black. We had some blackout blinds installed on the skylight, but there was still a little gap all around the edge of it, so I added some trim around the window and painted it the color of the walls. I then added two by fours to the TV area and attached a wall mount. Our friend and neighbor, Ken, came over and helped my husband lift the TV and mount it on the wall mount because I did not want to try doing that. After the TV was mounted, I cut pieces of quarter inch plywood to create the new wall. And then I made frames out of um, lattice strips that are a quarter inch. I wanted to use something real thin so the panels would be real light. I reinforced the corners with fiberglass and uh, resin epoxy. After the frame was made, I covered it with speaker cloth and added magnets. Then I added a 2x4 to that side area to the wall and another 2x4 across the top to join it to the TV wall. I attached sliding door hardware to the top 2x4 and made some panels out of a wooden frame and fabric that could just slide back and forth to access that area. I also made a little quarter inch plywood box that would cover all the wiring coming out of the wall. So there you go, TV wall project is finished. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Thanks for watching.